video is about uh, net ionic equations of reactions of acid with acids with bases. But before uh, I get into that, I just want to start by kind of reviewing what was the very beginning of this chapter and what I said really underpins everything uh, that we talked about in this chapter, and that is understanding what happens to a compound when it dissolves in water. And so we've looked at three different possibilities. The first one being a strong electrolyte. And so a strong electrolyte is going to be something that when it dissolves in water produces exclusively ions. And so there are, we've mentioned there are two types of compounds that'll do this. One is going to be a water soluble ionic compound. And so as I've given as an example here, magnesium chloride, which is water soluble. And when it uh, and when, when you dissolve a mole of magnesium chloride in water, you get a mole of magnesium ions plus two moles of chloride ions. The other kind of compound that we have uh, classified as a strong electrolyte is going to be a strong acid. And that's because a strong acid ionizes completely. And so when we dissolve a strong acid like hydrobromic acid in water, it's going to completely ionize to give us uh, a mole of HBr, giving us a mole of hydrogen ions and a mole of bromide ions. And there is none of the uh, HBr molecule remaining intact. Uh, the, at the opposite end is a non-electrolyte, and a non-electrolyte, as we've said, is going to remain entirely intact and produce no ions. And so I have given uh, ethanol as an example here. Ethanol is not an acid. It's not an ionic compound. And so when you dissolve ethanol in water, the 100% of the molecules remain intact and no ions are produced. In between that, we've got weak electrolytes, and that's going to be something that produces some ions in aqueous solution. And the most uh, obvious example of that, and the thing we're going to focus on in this video, is a weak acid. And so I've given an example here of nitrous acid, which is a weak acid. When I dissolve it in water, it will produce some ions. It ionizes, but at most concentrations, it's going to ionize by less than 5%. And so there was one instance in which I had this actually drawn as sort of an equilibrium arrow in which uh, the forward arrow was very small and the reverse arrow was very large. Now, this raises the question, because we write a lot, we've written a lot of molecular, then ionic, then net ionic equations, how do you write a weak acid in an ionic and a net ionic equation? It's clear that for a strong electrolyte, when you get to the ionic equation, you are going to write it as being dissociated or write it as being ionized, and you're going to break it up into ions. And it's clear that for a non-electrolyte that you are not, you're going to write it in an ionic uh, equation as being intact. What about a weak acid, which is kind of halfway in between? Well, because it is only ionizing a little bit and almost always uh, less than 5% and certainly less than 10%, um, we're going to show, we are always going to show a weak electrolyte as being unionized in an ionic equation. That is, we're going to show it as an intact molecule. And so let's take a look at the um, consequences of this for the um, net ionic equations of, of strong acids with strong bases versus weak acids with strong bases. So if we're going to look first at the reaction of hydrochloric acid with sodium hydroxide, that's a strong acid plus a strong base. This is, all, this is always kind of the poster child for a strong acid, strong base uh, reaction. Um, we know that HCl ionizes completely in water. It's a strong acid, and that's really the definition of a strong acid. And so I can start by writing the molecular equation, which is the one thing I told you to brand into your forehead, which is an acid plus a hydroxide base gives you water plus a salt. And so I've written that here. Now, when I do the ionic equation, because HCl is a strong acid, it's going to ionize completely. Because sodium hydroxide is a water-soluble hydroxide base, it's going to dissociate completely into its ions. Water is a non-electrolyte, and so it remains intact. Sodium chloride is a water-soluble ionic compound, and so it is uh, written as being ionized, as being dissociated. And now I've gone ahead in this line and color-coded my spectator ions. Sodium appears the same on both sides of the equation. 
chloride appears the same on both sides of the equation. And so I can cancel them out and I get the net ionic equation, which is simply H plus plus OH minus gives me water. Now let's move on to a very, very similar compound, but the difference being that instead of being a strong acid, hydrofluoric acid is a weak acid. I'm keeping the same strong base, sodium hydroxide. And by the way, I'm only making you learn strong acid, strong base, weak acid, strong base. You're not going to have to write net ionic equations for anything that involves a weak base. HF doesn't ionize in water, or at least, as I was just saying on the previous slide, it ionizes so little that we treat it as being unionized for the sake of the ionic and net ionic equation. And so I write the molecular equation, and you'll see that it looks almost identical to the molecular equation above. All I've done is replaced a Cl with an F in every instance. The difference is when we come down to the ionic equation, whereas HCl here uh, was fully ionized in the ionic equation into H plus plus Cl minus, because HF for the most part does not ionize, we write it as being intact. Sodium hydroxide, again, being a water-soluble hydroxide base, we write it and it's dissociated as ions. Water is a non-electrolyte, so it stays together as water. Sodium fluoride is a water-soluble ionic compound, and so we write it in its dissociated way. But now you'll notice that instead of having two spectator ions like I had up here, chloride, the same on both sides, sodium, the same on both sides, I only have one spectator ion, which is the sodium because it's the only thing that looks the same on both sides. Fluoride here is uh, dissociated into ions, but in hydrofluoric acid, it's not dissociated into ions, so I can't cancel it out. So I'm only canceling out the sodium. And so when I get to the net ionic equation, it looks different from the net ionic equation up here. In this case, it's HF plus OH minus gives me water plus F minus. Um, the, a, a way to think about this, and I've, I think I just offhandedly, I've spoken with one or two people about my, my milkman analogy, and kind of people stare at me in strange ways when I talk about my milkman analogy. So let me put it to you a different way. Um, it's fall right now as I'm recording this. Um, there, are, there are oak trees in my yard, and I've got squirrels coming to pick up acorns just running rampant all over my yard to pick up acorns. So suppose we consider this reaction of, a, of an acid with a base as, as being a squirrel in the form of a hydroxide ion coming to get an acorn, which is an H plus ion, so that it can form water. Okay. What's the difference between a strong acid and a weak acid? The squirrel is going to get its proton either way to form water. But you can think of a strong acid as being like an oak tree whose acorns have already fallen on the ground. And so the squirrel never actually interacts with the tree. The squirrel just comes along and grabs the acorn off the ground and makes its water molecule. By contrast, you can think of a weak acid as being a tree that hasn't dropped its acorn yet. The squirrel is still coming to get the acorn, but now the squirrel does have to interact with the tree. It has to actually go and pluck the acorn off the tree to carry it away. The squirrel is going to get its proton to form its water molecule, going to get its acorn. But instead of just picking it up off the ground because the, because the tree has already dropped it, it actually has to climb up the tree and grab it off of the tree. Maybe that analogy helps you. Maybe it doesn't. I'm always looking at sort of mental pictures to understand how these things work. The bottom line is this. For a strong acid, strong base reaction, regardless of what the strong acid is, regardless of what the strong base is, the net ionic equation is always going to be the same. H plus plus OH minus gives water. That's because all strong acids dissociate completely, ionize completely. And a strong base, by definition, is a water-soluble hydroxide, which is also going to dissociate completely. Therefore, you'll always have two spectator ions, and you will always get this net ionic equation. For a weak acid strong base titration, it is always going to look like this. HA plus hydroxide gives you water plus A minus. And, and HA is simply the convention that we use to refer to a weak acid in which H is the H plus, 
is hydrogen and A is whatever is left over when the hydrogen is removed. In the case of the example I was giving you before, A would be fluoride. In the case of acetic acid, uh, A, would be, uh, A would be acetate. In the case of nitrous acid, which is a weak acid, A would be nitrite. And so this is just the generic form of the, of the um, net equation you're going to get for any reaction of a weak acid with a hydroxide base. Okay, well, that's an important thing to be think to keep in mind as you approach the test we're going to have this week. And so thanks for watching.